Welcome to BS Garage. I'm Brenda, and you are joining us for part two of our timing belt service on our Rally Civic. If you haven't seen part one where we take everything apart, you might want to jump into that one first or embrace the chaos and watch them in reverse order. Either way, in this video, we're going to be putting everything back together. So let's jump right into it. This is the replacement tensioner that we got. And this is the one we just pulled off the engine. We're noticing that for starters, this one spins a lot. And this one only spins a little. This one's also bigger than this one. So we're going to do some reading and figure out which of these is the preferred operating mode. And then we're going to pick the one we like better. I'm going to pop off the crank sprocket now. And behind it, we're going to have access to the front crank like oil seal. And we want to see if that's part of where some of our grime is coming from. It doesn't want to come out though. So we had a bit of trouble getting our crank sprocket off. And in order to kind of address that problem, we first hit it with some penetrating oil. And then we very gently uh, worked in there with pry bars. So coming in from angles where we could leverage it on the sides of the oil pan like that, we gently pulled until it broke free. You want to be really careful with that. Using something like a, a three-tooth puller uh, can supposedly damage that enough that you can't use it anymore. And the sharp edges on a pry bar can also damage that part. So you have to be very careful and patient, but eventually it will work itself free. And then you'll have something like, something like, And then you'll have something like this. Something, something just like this. <laughs> something like this. Something like this. Just like that. Here you go. You can actually see on the bottom of ours where it's been rusty, but again, it's just on the bottom. The other half of it, not rusty like that. So that's a bit weird. But anyway, that's why it was sticking. It's because we got rust on the inside of our sprocket here. So now that we finally worked that sprocket free, um, we did inspect our crank shaft seal here. And after taking a look at our replacement oil pump, and we did intend to replace the oil pump, it's looking like there's some studs that go down into something within the oil pan. We're not really equipped right now to take that oil pan off, um, even though we know that we want to do the gasket later and there's a big old ding from racing in Yanceyville in the oil pump. So that's gonna have to happen, but today is not that day. Here's the seal that we want to replace on our new oil pump, but we can save this for later because fortunately our kit came with replacements. So the first thing that I have to do is find my kick, here it is, and pry out the original seal. I have no idea how much oil is gonna come out right now, so I have a catch can pan, catch pan underneath, and now what happens? All right, so just a little bit of extra persuasion to get the flathead screwdriver in between the seal and the oil pump, and then eventually you can lever it out. I found a gap at the bottom of it, and that's how I did that. And it's not under pressure right now, so no oil shooting out, that's good to know. And this is all, you know, dead now. I killed it. All right, so with the crank seal replaced, we're gonna move up to the top of the engine and do the same thing, but for the cam seal. In here, we can actually see that there is a bit of oil and crap collected around that seal. So we want to replace it and make sure that everything is not leaking. All right, so we have the old seal extracted now. We'll clean up in there and then we'll put the new one in. Okay, and that's in. All right, with both of those seals replaced, we're ready to get at the water pump. 
So we're going to remove the water pump and it's going to make a big mess and get coolant everywhere. But we have to do it for reasons. I don't know. But we're gonna do it. We're messing with it right now. So let's get in there and get cooling all over my floor. So first step, we gotta undo this bracket on the alternator, let that swing out of the way, and then we're just gonna hit the bolts on the water pump and pull it out. Just down there kinda tight. Oh! Oh, wow, that's a deep gash. Yeah. Wow, I'm surprised that that was so sharp. Which part did you just cut yourself on yeah, so Jesus. I can avoid it? Just uh, wherever your knuckles want to swing into on the uh, that bolt that's on there right now. Oh, jeez. Is this the one he was working on? I think so, yeah. Well, let's not fall in his footsteps. Right. Huh? Now that the coolant's been drained from the engine block, we can just pull off the original water pump and replace it with a new one. This is the last piece that we had to take off of the engine. Now we're gonna be putting it back together. While Randy gets the new water pump ready to go, I'm just gonna clean up the gasket surface a little bit and make sure that we get a nice tight seal for the water pump gasket. With all this back together, we're just gonna do all the same stuff we did, but in reverse, starting with this water pump going in here. The um, bolts are all of different lengths. As we took them out, I snugged them into the holes that matched up with the original pump, just so that I knew which ones go where. Hopefully none fall into my bucket of coolant down at the bottom, which, you know, it's gonna happen. Don't know what the torque spec on that is either. I'm sure it's unimportant. You know, make it ceremonious. Make it ceremonious? Yeah. That we're putting the new timing belt on? Mm -hmm. Very big deal. There you go, I can hold that. Getting close. I'm gonna take that spoon off temporarily. This is a trick for getting your, your timing belt back on easily. <laughs> to unhook the, the, the spring on the tensioner. And then you should be able to slip it over just like that. There we go. It goes on and makes scary grinding noises. There we go. That's on. And now that spring can go back on and put it back under tension. Ding for success. Oh, that's good. Right. Just like we want our viewers to ring that bell. Right, now I want my crank shaft, or my, my, my crank sensor, which I put somewhere up here. Here it is. Cool, so we're gonna put that back where it goes, down here. Now the lower timing cover can go on. Harmonic balancer back in place. Now it's the bolt. Okay. All right, so that went great. There were no collisions, didn't feel anything interfering as I turned over the engine by hand. So we're ready to move on to the next step, which is adding a little bit of tension to that timing belt and then continuing to put everything back together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some pressure on the cam sprocket here and belt while Steve slowly turns the crank down below, and what that does is add a little bit of tension to the belt. Okay, and now we tighten everything down at the tensioner. Wow, 
Welcome to Brenda's Gasket Replacement Station, where I'm going to replace all of the gaskets in the valve cover and these little screw guides. I hope these are rigid and I didn't just break something really important. I just yanked on this and it shattered. Done. Next step. What is it? So that's probably it. We'll call it good. Here we go. Sounds good. So that's it for our timing belt change slash water pump change slash crank seal change. We haven't done any of the uh, replacement mounts yet. Those are coming in part two. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe so that you see when part two comes out where we're going to replace all of the motor mounts and the uh, isolators that we pulled out. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.